All right, so one of the things I often get asked is how do you fall asleep like really quickly in two minutes flat? So in this video, I will tell you how to fall asleep in less than two minutes. And I literally mean that. Um, I would show you the proof, but my, I'm using my phone to film. Uh, but on my phone, I have this app called Aura, which is a sleep tracking app, which connects to this ring here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and basically on, on the app, there's this thing called sleep latency, which is how long it takes you to, from the moment you lay down to when you actually fall asleep. My average latency is about three and a half minutes. And on the low end, it's anywhere as, as soon as like, yeah, one to two minutes. And on the high end, sometimes it's maybe five to seven minutes. Uh, it really depends on like, you know, the particular day and what I'm doing, how I feel. But my average sleep latency is very low. So that's, that, that's kind of like my backup, my proof that I know how to fall asleep in two minutes flat. In fact, two minutes is probably, I would say on the fast end, really you should be aiming for between three and five minutes, but you know, I mean, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, it's all kind of the same. As long as it's under 10 minutes, I would say for most people that you, you're going to be happy with that, right? If you can fall asleep every night in under 10 minutes, two minutes, five minutes, whatever, you, you're going to be happy, okay? So that's the intro. So this is something that I've learned deliberately. I deliberately decided I'm not sleeping efficiently and I'm wasting about, it was taking me about 45 minutes every night just to fall asleep. So I thought, hold on, that's 45 minutes kind of wasted where, you know, I'm not sleeping efficiently. If, if I can fall asleep faster, then I can get those eight and a half hours in sooner than wake up earlier and get more done or, you know, experience more life, go on more adventures, whatever. So, you know, I think we, I think we can all agree, like the, the less you have to sleep or the less, the less time you have to spend in bed, the better, because then you have more time to do other things. So how have I done it? Well, the first one and probably the most important one is activity during the day. I cannot stress this enough. Your, your body and your mind really need to be fully active during the day and you should ideally stack all of that activity or most of that activity in the early part of the day as soon as you wake up. So, and you know, this, I guess this kind of goes back to, you know, genetic stuff really, like as we were evolving or growing as a species, we typically would wake up early, you know, with the sunrise and immediately start doing something, you know, whether it's building a wall, you know, carrying firewood around, hunting, you know, we usually would start doing something physical outside in the sunlight within the first hour of the day. But, you know, as things evolved and we got more technical and more, we became more of an indoor species that kind of got lost and it had a massive detrimental impact on people's sleep quality. You know, naturally we should be falling asleep pretty much instantly. You know, as soon as the, the sun goes down, you relax, do a little routine, whatever, get, you know, lay, get, in, get into bed, lay down and fall asleep. That's what every other species does right? But for some reason, humans have this trouble because of all these things. Right. Most importantly, in the first hour or two of the day, you need to spike your heart rate. I don't care how you do it. <laughs> and you can do it in all kinds of ways. Uh, well, I would recommend you do something like going outside for a walk or uh, doing some press ups, doing a little exercise routine, you know, something, whatever you find fun. Uh, it can be something simple, but as long as you just for a few minutes in the first two hours of the day, you spike your heart rate, the, the higher, the better, you know, within reason. Um, Ideally, you would, you know, do a 20 minute workout first thing in the morning or go for an hour walk. And it doesn't have to be a strenuous walk, but just go for an hour walk. I don't know, strap on a podcast or don't, you know, just walk around in nature, whatever the case is. But do something active in the first two hours of the day. Also, if you're going to have coffee, uh, I used to drink coffee a lot every day. Uh, I have nothing against it. I just decided that I didn't really need it anymore. Uh, but if you are a coffee drinker, that should also be done not first thing in the morning. And this is really important. Not You should not first drink a coffee as soon as you wake up. And you might think, well, okay, that's gonna spike my heart rate and increase cortisol. You are correct, yeah. But if you do it first thing in the morning, you're adding that cortisol spike to the already existing cortisol spike that you get from waking up and uh, moving around, exercise, sunlight, etc. So what happens is you get a crash at about 10, 30 or 11. So what you want, if you wanna be really smart about it, Obviously you shouldn't have caffeine before lunch. Oh, sorry, after lunch, I mean. Uh, but if you really wanna be smart about it, the best time to have coffee is, let's say if you wake up at seven, you would have your first and only coffee of the day at about 10.30 or 11. So a bit later in the morning. And this is there's a bunch of studies on this. Uh, yeah, we could go into the, the biohacking side of things, but really that's not what this channel is for. But yeah, that's my recommendation. Coffee, 10.30 to 11, and then exercise before the coffee if you can imagine such a thing. <laughs> it might be a bit difficult. 
So then the second one kind of ties into the first one really. No caffeine after 12, okay? And no, um, just checking my notes here so I'm gonna make sure I get this right because I did plan this out earlier for you. So no caffeine after 12 and no food after 6 or 7 p.m. And this is another big one, right? The, the earlier you can push back your last meal, the better your sleep quality is gonna be and the faster you're gonna fall asleep. Contrast to that, you may, let's, let's start with proving it, right? So you may remember the times where you have a huge meal at nine or 10 in the, in the evening, and then afterwards you just can't fall asleep. You just feel rubbish, your digestion's all churning, right? Hopefully, I would imagine you've experienced that, and you know that if you have a super late meal and it's really big, and then you try and fall asleep, you're gonna have trouble. Contrast to that, if you push your, you know, your last meal back to, let's say five or 6 p.m., by the time it gets to 10 p.m., you're basically, you're all light, you know, you're relaxed, you're not digesting anything, usually, and I've found this across literally three years of data, sleep data, usually you're gonna fall asleep a lot faster and you're gonna have more deep sleep. So it's like a, a double bonus really. And then tied on to this second one still, so no caffeine after 12, no food after six, no screens after 8 p.m. So you can have a little bit longer on screens, you know, but after 8 p.m. I would recommend that you turn all screens off. If you have, you know, really bright LED bulbs, turn them down or off. Um, use, you wanna use like soft lighting, um, things like, although it is LED, but you see the thing in the background here, it's like a soft lighting, you can't really see the light source. Uh, that's better for your eyes. But even that is too much because that's LED uh, and it's also blue, <laughs> which is the worst of the, of the uh, colors that you could have. Better would be like orange or red, or even better would be like really, really soft lighting using uh, non-LED bulbs. I know they're more expensive, right? Much more expensive than LED to run, but they're significantly better for your eyes and your body. So yeah, it's like a kind of balancing act. Just do whatever you feel you should do. And then number three, when you finally get into bed, so after you've done all those things, lay down and don't do any of that nonsense like counting sheep, counting breath, whatever, all this stuff. Because in my experience, and maybe you feel the same, it just keeps your mind active. It, it doesn't really help that much. I know it's like an old wives tale, you know, count sheep or just count your breaths, count to a thousand. But in my experience, just keeps your brain active. And then you start thinking about things in between the counting. And then eventually you're just, you know, wide awake. So in my experience, the goal is to not think about anything, just like meditation, uh, which is obviously easier said than done. But the way, you, one of the ways you can do that is by focusing, instead of focusing on numbers and thoughts, focus on feelings. So just scan through your body and your muscles one by one, uh, muscles, right? You would only have one body <laughs> uh, and just kind of, sense how it feels, like how relaxes your neck, your jawline, you know, your eyebrows, things that you don't often think about. If you really need to pull out the big guns, right, I've saved the best till last, lay, if, assuming you have a hard floor, like a carpet or wood or something, uh, lay down on your back on the hard floor for just two minutes, right, one minute, two minutes, enough to feel how uncomfortable it is, and then get into bed, and then tense every muscle in your body at the same time, like really, really tense them all, and hold that for as long as you can, ideally 10 to 20 seconds, and then completely relax. And, you know, if you do, to be honest, if you do all of these things, and then you do that final one, in my opinion, you're just gonna fall straight asleep. You know, it's, it's pretty foolproof, to be honest. So yeah, try it out, and uh, let me know, like, in the comments, your best sleep tips, or ideas that you've used in the past.